Greetings, friends. We go once again into the grimoire of fun. And this week, we are doing Pirate Loot Storage Box. This is something I've had in my mind for quite a while. It's a themed design that matches, you know, a decor, say if you do pirate or whatever. But I wanted something that was practical that you can build these boxes. They could be part of your decorations. And when you're done, you put all your stuff into said box and put it away. A really double purpose and really useful idea. And I wanted to build it as cheap as possible and as light as possible. So this is gonna be built out of two by fours and stone board. I have a few details to, to figure out as I build it, but regardless, I hope you enjoy the video. Now, as you saw the beginning picture, um, we we're building the boxes and I decided to get this thing all out of a 2x4 as much as possible. So all my measurements are going to be based on using a single 2x4 to build each box. Especially the size of them. If you go bigger, you may need to adjust this a little bit. So here, the first thing you want to do is we're going to knock these two 2x4s into inch and a half by an inch and a half. So as a 2x4 is 3.5 inches wide, we're going to end up with a piece in the middle. Ignore how that's all tapered. That's because there was such a bow in this. My table saw I had to take like six passes on it to get past this heavy duty warp. Now, once you've got this, we're going to be using this piece elsewhere, but our main concern is going to be these two 1.5 by 1.5s. And they'll be by eight. We're going to be cutting them down later. Now, you see here that I took the table saw, set it to a three quarters of an inch depth, and then I ran it through and then flipped it and ran it through it again. You want to end up with three quarters of an inch here. So when you do your cuts, make sure that your three quarters of an inch stays to the outside. And you're going to end up with a straightforward L-shaped uh, piece of wood. Once again, use that elsewhere. Once you've got to this point, we can start cutting these things down and start making our boxes. The brilliant part about this thing is, is this is the main part. This builds the entire box, this L-shaped piece of wood. And once you get going, you could build these pretty quickly. I'm going to be building five in this video. Well, I'm building one to show you, but I, in the end, I'm building five all at the same time. Thus, you can see all those steps. Anyways, I'll be back and we will continue on with putting these boxes together and how I'm building the tops and connecting it all. I'll be back. Now, the next step we're looking at is we're going to be build the top and the bottom of these boxes. Now, out of each run of two by four, you should be able to get four of these. I did these at a 14 inch outside measurement. So the outside, 14 inches, stick with that. Now, the other piece here, this is gonna be for the verticals. We'll get two verticals out for the box out of this, maybe even three, you know, but in reality, I've, I planned for using two, because that way, if you make these a bit bigger, you can calculate that to be a bit bigger. Now, um, once we've got these to this point, you're gonna go through and you're going to I put these together glue them is your most important thing and then put a single nail through I just use an air nailer to drive a single nail through it to get this all tidied up together it doesn't need a lot we're not dealing with a lot of weight in these boxes and depending on if you're using them for storage like I am or not you don't even have to build them that strong but you should because you know you never know what people are gonna do with these things so anyways so we go through build up your top now I suggest that if you cut these, unless you're really precise or your wood is really nice, it has no warps in it, keep these as a group. You'll see up here, I labeled these four as A. So if they end up getting separated from each other, I know where these belong together. That way if you know if the saw decided to wander a bit, if I keep the same piece of wood that I cut all these out of together, there's a good chance that any deviations are going to be consistent across all four. It'll make life easier. So just label them, keep your pieces out of each one. Now, if you're building a really big box, this might not be possible, but in my case, this is what I'm doing. Anyways, I'm gonna start binding all these together. The next time you'll see me is when I got the top and the bottom built, and we'll talk about doing the vertical risers on the side, which are even easier than this. Anyway, I'll be back. So you've got the tops all built, and you've got the bottoms all built. The next step is really simple. You're using that exact same wooden uh, L-shaped piece of wood and you're making the verticals. These ones happen to be 14 inches tall and then just put on each corner glued and nailed and just like that. 
you have your full box. Now, before you go further, as you see, there's a bit of stone board in the bottom. What we're going to be doing is we want to do some texturing. Now, this is a very straightforward texture using a drill with a wire wool disc in it. The only thing is, is if you do that, please wear goggles. Just there's lots of risk with those little fibers flinging off and getting in your eye. Now, once you've got these frames done, you're ready to start putting in the actual parts to finish framing it up. And it's up to you at this point how you go about it. You can do this entire stone board and doing textures as you'll see later on in this video. Or you could put in plexiglass on all four of these edges and just like that you have got a very cool rustic display case. And because these edges hide your, your transition, pretty much whatever you use will look good. Anyways, I'm going to go forward and um, continue on. Now, if you are doing stone board, the first piece you want to do is the bottom here. And you see mine's a bit loose. That's okay. I didn't expect it to be tight. If you make it too tight, you fight it. So you cut the bottom first, put it in. Then you want to cut two opposite sides of each other and put them in. Because this measurement will be slightly different. Gotcha. the bad angle there. This measure will be different because the moment you put this piece in and this piece in, your horizontal measurement is no longer the same as it was before, even if these are square. So two sides and then do this one. Then just cut the board, put it in, and well, actually you cut the board and you get it ready because we're going to be painting it next, which will be coming up right about now. Now, once you have all your pieces cut down for the inside as described before, they are now ready to be painted. Now, the first thing you want to do is this wood doesn't like to use this next technique without a base coat on it. Now, if you make these boxes into cargo boxes, then yes, this is where you're going to go. I'm just going to show you a technique because I think it's really cool. Um, if you're going another direction, paint it up however you want. Um, you could paint these as like blocks for a clown type uh, setup, or you could even put plexiglass in these things and make them into a display case. These things have a lot of options. Anyways, so we'll get right into it. Brown base coat. I'm going to quickly put a coat of black onto it. Now, what you're looking at is you're looking at for most coverage there. Now, using one of these tools, I discovered it's pretty dirty right now. Using one of these tools, it is a wood texture tool. And I saw them a long time ago. Love these things. I hadn't had many uses for them, but I had one on hand. So now, all you do is you start up here, you push down, and you rotate through with the wood texture. I keep a wet rag beside so I can get rid of the majority of that paint after the pass. And then what you do is you just have some fun with this fantastic tool. And just like that, you go from a plain sheet of wood. Try to randomize it a bit, actually. Oh, that you mean actually, as always, because you don't want it to look too consistent. And just like that, you go from a regular piece of wood to a fully textured piece of wood. And it actually turned out pretty nice. Anyways, going to continue on to assembly. All right, you can see that all of the interior panels are now installed. What I did here is I ran a bead around the edge of clear silicone, stuck these on, and then just put a brad nail in each in a, every once in a while. The brad nails hold it decently, but that silicone, when it dries, makes this rock solid, and it'll never come out now. And it also adds a layer of protection because it stops and it's crawling into your storage slash decor. Anyways, I'm going to start building the top now. I'll be back to discuss that. Now the lids on these things are pretty straightforward. So what you're going to do is, you remember how we had that piece of wood from the center of the 2x4? Well, that becomes the lid. When you nail these things together, watch your fingers because you can catch yourself so quickly, and just glue the corners and make sure at least the bottom is flush. If the top is different because of just how it cuts, so be it. Adds character to the box. Now, once you've got it to this point, you're going to texture it with the wire wool. Chamfer the edge with a knife. And then we're going to move on to here. So, stain it up as we did the rest, with the rest of the box or however you decide to do the rest of the box. Now, we do one more sheet of wood. This is the only time I'm going to say 
you want to measure it for the box it's going into because you want a snug fit so you know if if you have to vary do a bit of a variation especially if you're doing multiple but if you're just doing a single one you're gonna be measuring it anyways so what i did here is you can see that the first step that i did is i put a thin bead of glue actually silicone around this edge like i had with the rest of them and then what i did oh actually no i didn't I did it backwards here i glued these on with wood glue first and what these are these are the cutouts from the edge of these two by fours, the little three quarter by three quarter piece. Let nothing go to waste. Now, I nailed those onto the actual piece of wood after it was finished painted. Then I put a bead of silicone around the top and using these angles on the edges to line it up, I just put the lid on the box. All right, I put the top on the bottom and then when it goes in, it is a snug fit and it doesn't need any extra support to keep it in place anyways that brings to a close the actual box i'm going to come back and we're going to talk about decorating this up doing a little bit of weathering on it and putting some stenciling on it but anyways i'll be back all right we are down to the final step of making these crates and this is just the aging step first thing i did is i took a black dry brush and i ran an edge all around the inside you can see it over there as well you don't have to be very specific about this, you just gotta make it so it dirties it up a bit. The next thing is I took the exact same black and I dry brushed these edges around here to give it a bit of dirt and to make it look like these crates are used. You gotta think about where they're gonna rub up against and such like that. Now, the last, well not the last step, then I took, uh, I believe this is 3 8 inch dowel, wooden dowel, and I just cut little don't like little wafers off of it, sanded each side off just a tiny bit, and then just glued it on. It makes it look like hand forged nails. And it really, you don't have to be specific about these. You have fun with them. And you'll end up with a really realistic looking nail for these. Now the final, which is right in front of us, is this stencil. I printed out the font on my computer. I'll include this as a link down below if you want to use this one specifically. And all I did is I printed out, use spray glue to stick it to the back of a piece of plastic. This is from a croissant box, use thinner stuff. This was very hard to cut. And then all you do is you place this thing on and you can see that there's extra holes. And all those holes are is I put tape over them so I can push the stencil down and it'll hold it in place while I'm working. Then using a sponge, with a with gold paint on at least in my case you sponge it over and then you do it about two layers and you end up with a really nice looking stencil thing and this is reusable so you can use it on multiple crates same thing happened with the east india company over here did the exact same thing made a template and then ran with it regardless these crates are fantastic you're going to see the end presentation in a couple moments here regardless thank you for tuning in if you remember if you like what you saw hit like if you really liked it hit the subscribe button and the notification all that anyways i won't go on too long enjoy the final video have a good one all.